everybody. This is Pastor CT along with uh, one of our assistants, Brother Josh Tesh, hey here uh, live on campus here at Victor Baptist Church. And we're so excited and thankful for what God is doing here in North Augusta. And uh, we are thrilled to death and thankful to have my father-in-law, Dr. Steve Hurt, uh, with us on the call today, as well as my brother-in-law, uh, Dr. Brent Carr. Uh, he's an evangelist and also is the president of Carolina Bible College up in Anderson. And we're thrilled to death to talk to them about the day, about the future and, and college and training and discipling Amen. and going to the next level. And uh, while we were just sitting here talking, me and Brother Josh and Brent and Brother Steve, before we started uh, this interview, uh, we started thinking about reminiscing of the old days. Uh, back when I first came here, when I first got here, Brent had already been here at college and Dr. Hurt worked for Larry Brown. And we had some great times, didn't we, guys? We did. Yes, we did. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Some of the best memories I have is uh, is right there in North Augusta. God really moved and God worked. And college to us was instructional. It was learning, but it was also an experience in that, you know, at any given time, one thing I loved about it is the Spirit of the Lord would start moving in class. And Dr. Hurt, my father-in-law, would just put his book to the side and we'd just go to church for a little while, wouldn't we, Brother Steve? Yes, sir. Great days, great days. And, uh, of course, if it wasn't for that Bible college, I would have never met your daughter and <laughs> would have never met your other daughter, and we'd, we'd be, both be in bad shape today. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve, kind of tell me how you got your start. I know the truth is we kind of wrote down that, you know, first of all, if it wasn't for the Lord, we want to give the Lord all the praise for that. But if it hadn't have been for how the Lord used Dr. Brown uh, none of us would even know each other. Kind of tell us how you got your start and, and the college thing and, and how all that started. Well, actually, we we just, we just had a bunch of guys that, uh, I say a bunch of guys, maybe a dozen people that wanted to uh, be trained. And uh, we decided that uh, we would take on that responsibility. Brother Brown and myself did. He made the decision. He made all decisions. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but, but in those days, uh, he... He just decided that that's what needed to happen. And I'm telling you, the thing, it just morphed into uh, something incredible. Uh, it just kept growing, getting larger. Uh, he would go out and do meetings, and, uh, and people would have heard about it. They'd ask him about it while, they, while he was out preaching and whatnot. And the next thing I know, he's dragging one more home with him. Yeah. And, it, and it just it grew. It was unbelievable. I, I'll never that's forget probably. I met him. He was preaching at the West Virginia. Well, he's preaching at a camp meeting way back in Flatwoods, West Virginia, when I was a little kid. Yeah. And I met him at the West Virginia Jubilee at Dr. John Smith in Taze Valley. And that's how it started for me. Brent, how did you meet Dr. Brown? S same way. It's along the same lines. I, I met a uh, preacher in 96. He was preaching in Shelby, North Carolina, and a group of us guys went up and heard him. And uh, I mean, as soon as he started preaching, uh, in my heart, I said, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And, uh, and it took me a few years, but, but, uh, I surrendered completely to the Lord and, and moved to North Augusta and, uh, best decision I made in my life up to that point. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Well, and I, I remember, I think the first time I met him, he had Jonathan McNeese with him. And I remember he let John, John, I was just a teenager. Jonathan's way older than I am. <laughs> and uh, I he let Jonathan go up to preach for a few minutes. And I remember thinking, my Lord, yeah. if God ever does call me to preach, I want to do it like them guys do it. Yeah. And who would have known that years later I'd have moved here and I'm friends with Jonathan and now pastor in the church where Dr. Brown mm -hmm. did it for so long. It's amazing how God's connected pieces and put things together. And we are, certainly give God all the glory for that. You know, but still today, the, the thing is, the need is still great uh, for young men that are uh, pastoring or preaching or just freshly called to preach that want, you know, we, we have the, you know, the Arise Youth Conference, which reaches thousands of teenagers. Many of them get called to preach there. Brent, you do the, the singles conferences where young college students, and there's a, there's a huge pool, the Power of One Conference, there's a huge pool. Yeah of young Christian people that want to go to the next level with God. Right. Used to let their life be defined concerning success with the worldly standards, but want, don't want to be successful in the world's eyes, but want to be successful in God's eyes. And they're looking for a place to train and serve. And there are many great options in America today. 
but I'm so thankful for Carolina Bible College, Victory Baptist College being in one of those options. And we, we kind of want to talk about that today. Uh, you know, what we fully believe the Bible teaches not just to reach them and to see them be saved, but to disciple them. Yeah. Uh, we're thankful yeah. for that. And uh, so that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about the future of what Victory Baptist College looks like and what Carolina Baptist College looks like. So we wanted to give you and Steve uh, just a minute and talk to us about the burden for CBC and how it started and where you all are at with that currently. Well, ever since I, I've been a part of Victory, uh, I always had a burden for young preachers. And uh, because I, when I was one, I didn't, I wasn't surrounded by men like Dr. Hurt and, and Dr. Brown. Uh, I had some good men that influenced me over the years. Uh, Dr. Ed Maccabee was a great influence. But personally, uh, I didn't have anybody that was hands-on that would invest in me. And, uh, and, and I didn't have, uh, at the time, uh, somebody that would back up, you know, what God had called me to do. And uh, so for about four or five years, I just, I spent, I had surrendered the, to, to the Lord to preach, uh, but just wasted time, basically, spinning my wheels, doing nothing. And, uh, and when I met Doc Brown and I met Brother Steve, I, I found in them men that would take time. Uh, I told some young preachers about it last night. Uh, men that would take time to not just acknowledge you, but invest in you and pour into you what, what God had poured into them. Yeah. And uh, I saw through those men what I wanted and, uh, and what I didn't have where I was locally. Uh, when the Lord led me to North Augusta, I, I wanted to train. I wanted to learn about ministry. I thought uh, I've been in ministry a good bit of my life uh, around it. And I thought I knew everything about ministry until I got to victory and realized that I didn't know a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, and so I was able to sit under those men and they invested in me. And uh, as I've grown older, I realize there's a new generation of young preachers that are out there just like me and, and yourself. And uh, they need somebody that's going to pass that baton to them and invest in them. And again, not just acknowledge them and the gift that God's given them, but try to train and invest in them. So uh, long story short, God put that on my heart. I went to Brother Steve about it talked to him and he, he was hesitant at first um i i was an evangelist i didn't have a church i didn't have facilities uh i could i could put preachers in my garage but that was about it and uh so i needed somebody like brother steve uh the pastor of the church that uh had the means to be able to to uh make this happen and so i went to him and told him about my burden and again he was hesitant at first but we prayed about it and, uh, and then I watched God give him the same burden that God had put on me. Yeah. And, uh, and then he called me up one night and he said, let's do this. And so uh, we just prayed hard about it. Didn't know exactly what we was getting into. Uh, didn't know where God was going to take it. We just knew we wanted to do something for that next generation coming up. And, uh, and the only thing we can say from where we were then to where we are now is God just got in the middle of it blessed it completely and uh is continuing to grow it evidently wow it uh if if i may he uh he told me he wanted uh, he wanted to start this bible college and uh and, and I, I did have some hesitancy about it but but i want i want to tell you this i was sitting on the front row uh in my auditorium on a sunday morning and uh there was there was a uh, one of the fellas, the boys, teenagers, came and knelt, knelt at the altar. And I felt in my heart, and I'm not, I'm not no prophet, not the son of one, but I'm telling you, I looked down at that boy, and, God's, and, and the Lord told me that he was calling that boy to preach. And, the, and one of my staff members kneeling beside him turned to me, uh, Thomas Lovell, he could turn and looked at me and said, he, believe, he whispered to me, he believes God's calling him to preach. <laughs> and, uh, man, something went off in me, and I knew God's doing something here. So I called, I called Brent back. We had actually decided to put it off one year. Yeah. Year, yeah. And uh, and I told Brent a, a, a few days later, and there was a lot more even went into that. But a few days later, I called him. I said, "Man, I believe God wants us to do it now." 
And Brent said, well, let's, let's, let's go for it. I had envisioned going upstairs, sitting down at, at, at our, in our conference room at a conference table with four or five guys and starting. I never dreamed there'd be 40 or 50 guys when we opened the doors. And uh, I still haven't got over it. I just left uh, eating lunch with a, a new, a new guy, a boy that moved in from uh, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. And this guy has, comes from a life of drugs and he's freshly hadn't been saved a real long time. And uh, God, you know, it, I, I'm going to say this. I'll tell you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, and I, I cut up with you guys all the time. And I, I know that, but, but man, I'm looking for one more CT. <laughs> I, I, I want to find another Brent, another Robbie Burton. I want, I want to find another Malcolm. Car they're out there. They're out there everywhere. Yes, sir. Amen. And I just, I can, I'm telling you, I've been doing this for decades. I can smell this. Uh, God, it, God's doing business all of a sudden. And, and these guys are out, they're out hustling and working and, and, and they're so hungry, just like you guys were when you got to town. Uh, but but I, I developed a nose for it. I'm telling you, I developed a nose for it. And when, uh, I remember when CT stood, stood in our church service for the first time, I knew something was there. I, knew, I didn't know it was what it would turn out to be, but I knew there was something in him that was real. But anyway, I'm just saying, it, it, if, God ever, if God ever started one, he started this one. And I was there when he started yes, that sir. one. And he didn't start this one like he started that one. Yeah. Uh, the, in 1983, when we, we started that, it just morphed into a college. This one's more like firing a gun. I mean, it just bang, there it is. And we got the, this kid, he just is so on fire. And it just, it, it, today at lunch, it just got all over me. And he's moved in one of our dormitories over there. He's ready to do business. Uh, I don't know if Brent's even met him yet. I'm not sure. Uh, Nate will be a good guy. Yeah. All right. So if there's one thing that Dr. Brown taught us um, back when we started is that preaching's not taught, preaching's caught. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for my days at Victory when we were all together. And, you know, Dr. Brown, he didn't let us sit on the sideline. And you didn't either, Brother Hurt. You all constantly pushed us to get out in the nursing homes and the rescue missions. I, I still have memories of me and Brent going together and tag teaming at the rescue mission. Great days of learning to preach. I remember going into the prison cells in downtown Augusta. And in my memory, that's where God taught me how to preach to a sinner. Uh, and a boldness that would come over me in those prison cells declaring and preaching Jesus and how no matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, that the blood of Jesus is enough to forgive you and cleanse you. And yes, sir. so we're, we're thankful for, for those things and thankful for how what God was doing, what God has done over the years at Victory. I know Brother Steve ran the college here. And then after Brother Steve went to go pastor, Brother Brent ran the college here for years. And then after you left, Brother Josh has been facilitating things here and running things. And here we are in this juncture uh, where, you know, who would have thought, you know, when me and Brent and Steve were all together in college that one day Dr. Hurt would be in Anderson pastoring a great church. Brother Brent would be a thriving evangelist traveling the country and recruiting these young preacher boys from all over that uh, we would, I would travel and that one day I would be pastoring at Victory. I mean, I would have never dreamed that in a million years, but it has created a very incredible opportunity Amen. For, for us to work together. Amen. Uh, I believe everybody that's on this call has the same heart and maybe there's a young man watching this right now. And while we're talking, your heart's beating out of your chest mm -hmm. because you want memories like what we're talking of. You want yes. to have a part of your life, a memory where you can sit in a place where real, where a man mm -hmm. of God like Dr. Hurt and others can invest into your life and pour into your life um, and so this is what we were here to talk about today. Uh, you know, I've been here a little bit less than a year and with my schedule of traveling and the, the, uh, a, a lot more pressure than I thought it would be to pastor a church this large. <laughs> Obviously I don't have the singular time to pour into a college by myself. So we've been, um, Josh and I have met several times thanking and brainstorming. What can we do? We, uh, we want the college to continue on reaching uh, here in North Augusta. And uh, 
we got on the phone with Brent and with Steve and we said, hey, you all are doing a great thing. Brent, how many satellite campuses do you have now? We're running about five now. So outside of Anderson, you are piping the college out, the power yeah. of technology, right? Yeah. Uh, and so there are five other cities across America that are already satellite campuses that are, that are connected to Carolina Bible College. Uh, and they're all doing well. We've, we've talked to several of them and they've talked about how great your team has been to work together with and um, training with. And so we sat down and we talked and we called you guys, as you know, and uh, kind of the reason we're making this video is to kind of let everybody know the direction we're going to go this fall. And that is, uh, you tell them, Josh. Well, I know that I am, uh, I'm a direct product preacher of, of Brother Brent and Brother Steve's influence in my life. Um, when I came in, Brother Steve, you were finishing up your last year of teaching college and your very first class you ever taught, you said one or two sentences in class and literally changed the destiny and direction of my entire life. Wow. And, 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 then, and then Brent, over the next three years, you know, you and I just built some tremendous memories and what you're talking about. And the four years I spent in college there are men and young, young men out there that need that. And I've been doing my best through everything that happened with Doc Brown and just physically where he was. And they were trying to go online with certain classes and they were trying to do certain things. And I just said, I'll, I'll go up there and help teach because I want these guys to have the same experience I had. Yeah, sure. It was an amazing time and God changed my life that four years. And I want I want, I want these young men to experience that at Carolina. And, and if they're in this area, I want them to be able to come here at Victory and experience that same thing. And um, I'm so thankful. You guys have built a first-class team, Brother Steve, Brother Brent. Y'all have a tremendous group of teachers up there, from Brother Muscovic to Brother Pollard uh, to Brother Kuykendall. And, of course, you guys are doing a tremendous job. Bobby, doing youth ministry last semester. Yeah. It's been a great thing. And we want to be a part of what you guys are doing. And y'all have the manpower to do it. So what we're kind of announcing here today and what we're coming together to tell everyone here on this video call is we're kind of announcing the merger of Carolina Bible College and Victory Baptist College. And with a world that is so divided right now and with a world sure. that is so much discord, I think it's time that, that God's people see uh, that we're not in competition, but we are better together yeah. and we Good are time. better united and uh, so we're really happy to announce this, and uh, we're so excited about, you know, some stuff that you'll be able to do. You tell them about what you're going to be doing this semester coming in the fall. Well, it's just it's keeping the same thing going on. I mean, we've been working together for years in all kinds of different ways, and here's an opportunity for me, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law. I was a, a part of Carolina Bible College. Steve, what would you call me? What did what'd you call me when we started? When, what did I call you? I don't remember. Yeah, you gave me some time. So, three or four things. Uh -huh. <laughs> Several different things. Director of recruitment, dean of recruitment. Is that what you call Dean it? of recruitment. Yeah. Dean of recruitment. That yeah. just means go get them, CT. Go yeah. get them. Exactly so before I came here, I was I was a part of that, and and we're thankful. We want to keep that going, and we don't want to be in competition. Uh, we want to work together for the cause Amen. of Christ, and so here when we talked about it internally, we thought, look, let's not reinvent the wheel. Brother Steve, Brother Brent, myself, we've all worked together. We've all been a part of this for years. The best thing we can do is join together on this. And uh, so, so we thought the, the first little issue we came up in is I thought, well, if I was a young preacher moving to North Augusta, coming to North Augusta, would I have came just to watch video? And, and really when I search that question out, I, I did not know the answer to that. So we were like, okay, what can we do? So we're gonna pipeline in the services, the videos from you all to here in North Augusta. And we'll let Brent talk about how that'll work here in just a second. But, but also we're gonna have live things that happen here as well. Uh, we've talked to Brother Steve and to Brother Brent about uh, periodically throughout the semester, we'll, maybe Brother Steve can come in for a week, you know, for a class, or Brent can come through and teach a live class. I'll come in, teach a live class. Josh to come in, teach a live class. Other preacher friends of mine come in, teach a live class. Every now and then, we, as, a, as our, our college people, we can put the vans together and we can actually drive to Anderson a couple times a semester and have a big chapel service, uh, take our choir from Victory up to, t up to Anderson and just have big blowout services. Let's do it. And uh, so we're all in. 
and so we, you know we uh, we're we're excited about it, and we're thrilled about it that there is an opportunity to go forward with the college, and kind of what we're doing is that we are a North Augusta satellite campus of what's going on. And so we'll have some young men that come here and go to class here and, and do those things here. And while there's others that, that go to Anderson and do that, but we're just joining together and to work together. And uh, Brent, you kind of just give us a little insight with what other satellites do, what it will look like uh, and how that will work. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, bad in technology today. Uh, but we're using it for good. We're, we're taking our classes and uh, we're basically doing like, like a lot of churches have been doing. Uh, they're doing live stream or their, their Facebook live. We're recording our classes and we are uh, signing each satellite campus has access to a private account. It's not something that's just out there floating around. Uh, but each campus has access into uh, our account and they can go in and watch our classes uh, and join us uh, virtually uh, by watching a, a, a big screen TV or, or a, or a uh, some kind of uh, slide screen, uh, depending on what they're doing. A lot of them are doing different things and, and doing it different ways. But with technology today, we're able to uh, record our classes here in Anderson and you're able to watch there in North Augusta, and uh, and it's an incredible thing. Uh, the college, Victory, especially Victory, uh, there there's so many people who have gone through these colleges that are still in ministry, Amen. and uh, and so we're trying to continue that. And uh, I'm thankful for this this uh, partnership. I'm thankful for us joining together. And uh, it's fun to work with every one of these men that's on here. And uh, I, I'm excited about it. But uh, we're using the technology to be able to do that. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful somebody's using it for good. Amen. Uh, that's wonderful. So, so, Brent, talk to us about uh, you or Steve, whichever one of y'all want to dive into this. For a young preacher out there that, that's listening to this and would like to be involved, what, what kind of classes are being taught that, that a young preacher would like to be involved in? Uh, the pastor is going to be teaching uh, on doctrines this coming semester, uh, which is something so needed, not yeah. just with young preachers, but everybody needs to know the doctrines of the Bible. Right. And so he's going to be taking an in-depth look. Uh, I'm going to be teaching the book of Acts. Uh, book of Acts is often called the Acts of the Apostles, but really what it is, is it's a continuation of the gospel. It's the gospel in action. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to be going through that entire book. Um, we've got Brother uh, Kevin Cockendall that's going to be coming in. He's going to be teaching uh, the book of Hebrews for us. Um, we've just got some great, great uh, classes that are lined up. And uh, all of them are practical classes. And I love this, how Victory used to be. But you can take those classes and walk right out the door and put them to use in your everyday life as a Christian or uh, in ministry, mm -hmm. and uh, that that's that's we've we've cut cut away things you won't need, and uh, we're getting down to the basics and uh, giving you things that are practical that you can use in ministry. Yeah. Another thing that you said over the years, brother Steve, is that you know how absurd it is to see a young man that wants to go into ministry goes to seminary, goes to Bible college somewhere, but is so in debt by the time he gets out of seminary that he can't even go into ministry hardly to pay the bills. And so here we are. I want you to talk about that. You don't have to give a price amount. They can get that later, but talk about well, that. It, we had a problem with what you just said. Uh, a, a, a young man starts in the ministry neck deep in debt. That is not the best way to do this. And why is he in debt? They're try they they you the people that pay for these large halls that you see on these college campuses, these large auditoriums, and and all that goes with it. Uh, the people who pay for those are the students. They yeah. pay some astronomical amount. And and my thought was this, and Brother Brown's thought was this. Uh, we've got millions of dollars worth of facilities that set dormant during a lot of the week. Why not, why not uh, put 
them and, and, and acclimate them into the middle of all of that and, and do it there. And they don't have to pay for all that stuff. And instead of trying to see how much we can get out of them, uh, we set that aside and we try to hold it to the very bare minimum, minimum possible and yep. still get everything done. Amen. There's a big difference between using the people to build a ministry and using the ministry to build the people. Perfect. That's and, exactly. And for you all, I have seen it over the years work that you have used the ministry to build the people instead of using people. Amen. And Amen. I'm well, sure that philosophy. Um, so there's lots to talk about. And um, uh, if you have a heart to serve the Lord at all, maybe you're watching this today and you have a heart to serve the Lord in any capacity whether you are a preacher, whether you want to be a missionary, or whether you just got saved and want to learn more about the Bible, or whether you are a Christian that's been saved for years and years and years and you just want to go deeper into your studies, this is the perfect opportunity. If you're on campus here at Victory, mm -hmm. if you live in the CSRA and you would love to come be a part of these classes, this is a great opportunity. Uh, if you, you know, if you want to live in North Augusta or if you want to live in Anderson, it doesn't matter. You can get the same thing both places. And we're excited about this partnership. I'm excited about working with uh, my brother-in-law. I'm excited about working together with my father-in-law. It just means we'll probably get to see each other a little bit more than we did last year. Yeah, man. Um, so, Brent, you got any last words on this? We're excited about working with you, man. Man, I'm excited about it. Uh, I believe God's doing something big. And uh, I'm, I'm on board with whatever he's doing. And I'm glad he's growing it and extending it. And uh, there's a lot of young people out there that, that need what we're uh, dealing with and what we're doing. And uh, I believe in it, man. And I'm happy to be a part of it. Amen. What about young ladies? Do y'all do anything with young ladies there? We are. We just, we're actually uh, opening up a, a new branch of our college for uh, Christian education where uh, we're going to be offering classes to train young ladies to teach in elementary education. We also have uh, our Christian ministries for women that we've had started and uh, we've got a good handful of, of young ladies that are there serving God and uh, training along with the men as well. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. But well, Josh, you got anything to say? Um, no, that's it. I, I want to say quickly the last couple of years that we have been kind of facilitating the college. I just want to say thank you to the guys who have been teaching and we'll continue to use those. Uh, Brother Keith Finch who's here in our church uh, guys like pastor Mike Andrews over at Canaan, uh, Pastor David Hicks and Pastor James Parker, and some of those guys who have been helping us teach, we're going to continue to utilize those to offer uh, many, many live classes as well as we integrate some of the video classes there at Victory. So I want to say thanks to those guys we just mentioned. Great pastors around the area that all Absolutely. came out of Victory Baptist College that are now yeah. investing back into Victory Baptist College. So thank you for the James, for the Mike, um, and for the Hicks and all those guys. So we look forward to the fall coming and what God's got in store for, for VBC and CBC. Yeah. Can I say one more thing? All these men, all these people that are teaching the, the, uh, the teachers and the professors of our college and, and they're at Victory as well. Every single one of them are in ministry somewhere else. Yes. Uh, the, the nobody, nobody's drawing a salary and getting and, and working a living off of teaching. They're actually in ministry somewhere doing something. They're bringing in their expertise which is the best way to get trained if you're a young man. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we're thankful for that for sure. So Victor Baptist College, Carolina Bible College, Amen. working together this fall. And if you're a young man that wants to serve the Lord, a young lady that wants to serve the Lord, want to go deeper with the Lord, uh, you're a church member, just wants to go to a deeper level in your Bible studies, this is a great opportunity. And we want to just offer this and tell everybody with the direction we're headed with it. And uh, we're super excited about working together with you all. Uh, Brother Steve, we're going to close in this. I want you to pray and ask God to bless this and uh, ask God to bless maybe that young man that's watching this right now who God's dealing with his heart about doing this my, my. and uh, encourage him on this, all right? Yes, sir. Father, I pray, dear God, for the ones that are going to watch this, maybe ones that will watch it way out in the future even, Lord. And, and Father, you might even use words that were said here today uh, to call a young man into the ministry. Oh God. Oh God. Would that you would do that. We need men of God, Lord, that are, are well trained, that can, that can go out and, and, uh, and do spiritual battle. God, I mm. pray in the 
name, I mean in the good name of Jesus, uh, that you would use this as an arm to reach out into the United States of America and, and, and draw men into the ministry, dear God. And Lord, I ask you this, dear God, uh, in the name that is above every name, uh, in, in the name of the one to whom every knee will bow and every tongue will confess the name of Jesus Christ. We ask it in the name of Jesus that you would hear our prayer. Amen. Draw these men, dear God, for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.